We left Chicago at 3 a.m. traveling through Indiana. Stopped for a quick breakfast at Waffle House. We get Moulin Rouge style. Just let it do the night. Made it through to Kentucky, missing one important exit and getting stuck behind a tractor. finally arriving at the newly remodeled Visitor Center. This is by far the best park museum and learning center we have visited. The interactive exhibits were amazingly detailed and gave a great introduction to the park. If you have time to go through before your cave tour, you will not regret it. There's a short movie narrated by Mike Rowe about the history of the park. I found it very informative. Cave explorers and surveyors venture into these remote passageways to expand. We then bought our tickets to Great Onyx Cave's lantern tour and then headed to the campsite to set up. We just set up camp and now we're getting ready to go on our tour. And uh, yeah, we're just getting some food in before we go on our long little cave tour for two and a half hours. Woo! We met at Shelter B and then departed on these buses straight out of the 1960s. It is about a 20 minute bumpy gravel road ride to the entrance of the cave. It was 90 plus degrees outside, but as we came to the cave entrance, that dropped to the mid 50s. The story of Great Onyx Cave, like so many of the cave discoveries in the Mammoth Cave area, is filled with legend and lore. What is generally agreed is that the cave was discovered in 1915, in the area of Flint Ridge. After that, the numerous stories diverge. Edmund Turner and L.P. Edwards are the two competing protagonists. Turner, the geologist from New York, and L.P. Edwards, local farmer and pastor. Turner's claim to have found the cave while working for Edwards, was dropped two years into the legal fight for ownership and legal damages after Turner died. Edwards had landed a tourist gold mine and began competing with Mammoth Cave for tourists. He built a hotel there and by the mid-1920s the whole area was engulfed in the Kentucky Cave Wars. Shysters and con men trick tourists into patroning their caves instead of Mammoth Cave. This cave was the site of one of the most important land dispute law cases in U.S. history. It helped cement the idea that you did not only own the land on the surface of your property, but also the ground and resources beneath it. Edwards v. Sims, 1929, helped cement this into American law. Here we are entering the first main chamber of the cave, which has a fantastic display of stalactites and stalagmites. This postcard shows the bridal altar, called this in part because L.P. Edwards was known to have performed wedding ceremonies here. For a charge, of course. Here is a drapery stalactite and a column formation. This is a formation called the Ambitious Rat, as this corndog-looking protrusion here looks like a rat trying to climb vertically up the stalagmite. This is the Elephant's Ear Formation, a type of drapery stalactite. As we move deeper into the cave, we saw more magnificent dripstone formations, and even a few small gypsum flowers, which can take thousands of years to form. That is a big cricket. That's a lot of crickets. Yeah, that's probably funny. <laughs> 
We fix dinner. Made a fire. And ate some s'mores. Going to burn them. And had some time to reflect from the day. My favorite part about the cave, the Great Onyx Cave, was the nativity. Because as soon as you walked up, you're like, that is a nativity scene. This took 10,000 years or more to make, and it was before Jesus was even around. My favorite part about the cave is that when you went in it one way and you came out, it looked totally different. It was awesome. My favorite part about Onyx Cave was just the history that was behind it and how it was discovered and, and how they went about um, kind of creating the cave and how it got incorporated into the national park system. My favorite thing about the Onyx Cave um, was the entryway. There yeah. were a lot of um, amazing stalactites and stalagmites and made all sorts of fun shapes. There was one that I particularly liked that looked like a little rat climbing up and it was called the um, the ambitious rat and because uh, it was, he was just climbing straight up the stalagmite so that was really cool.